fucking bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches. Help keep our channel ad free by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here today with another fantastic 40K flashback retro feature. Today we're going to talk about terrain with, you know, walls and the FAQ being such a thing. I wanted to talk about some great terrain features and uh, kind of some overviews on how to make terrain slash guides from the old 4th edition Warhammer 40K book. This is uh, this is this was a rule book from 2004, uh, so it's roughly 12 years old to be quite honest, and it's um, it's a little bit, I suppose the rules, the sixth, uh, seventh edition rule set today is a little bit of a departure kind of from what we used to have um, back in the day, so to speak. I mean, this thing, it's probably comparable page wise when you take, you know, and you separate all the books, but content wise, this thing is just loaded with hobby gold because about half the book was features on how to actually paint things along with uh, mini games you know you could do combat patrol it showed you it gave you battle missions breakthrough missions campaigns you know scenarios all sorts of different stuff that you know st stuff like this we really don't see as much of these days and of course showcasing um, or showcased in this section first of all like how to make terrain and gives you different kinds of terrain because then it gets into uh, smaller scenarios like things like combat patrol um, <clears throat> some other kind of type missions here but there was a great book back in the day obviously 2004-ish on how to make war games terrain and the very first thing and I've emulated this through the years here is you take a layer of glue on the board um, and then basically you pour sand onto it and then paint the surface with a PVA woodworking glue and then you got these uh, kind of color mixes here that of course some of these colors aren't made anymore but you can definitely google it and find those colors if you fancied you know a tabletop that looked like that now what I have found in the past that works uh, if not, it's just as good, if not better, is you go to the store, you color match some of this paint, you get you a gallon of latex paints, right? The same color, color matched here, you get a roller, you roll it out on your four by six table or whatever, and then you basically pour your sand, or you can even get wood chips, like really finely grounded down wood chips, or, you know, wood, I guess, um, I don't know what they call them. I call them wood chips, but they're basically, they're like sand, but they're wood. Dump it all over your table, knock it off, you know, knock off the table, leave it out to dry, like in the sun or something like that for just a little bit. You don't want to get too crazy. And then come back and hit it with another coat of paint and you trap that texture. You can use sand too, playground sand bags are, are pretty cheap. And you trap that texture, you know, in between two layers of latex paint while it's drying, it's probably not going to chip up you know, and, and kind of come off. I'm sure you've been to game stores where like their tables are chipping up because they didn't really seal the texture into the board. And you want to try to be as fine as possible with it because you don't really want, you know, to come off on your clothes or on your models. You don't want it to be too rough that it, that it messes all sorts of things up. Conversely over here, they used to sell these, uh, these trees right here, which were basically actually pipe cleaners for like um, trombones and like uh, uh, saxophones and things just like dipped in glue and then flocked actually and that's that's how they produce those these were some great trees you still see them in game stores even today and i i wish they still put those out because they were pretty amazing but then again they're not a plastic kit that they can put together and then here's some sample battlefields that they show you um some snowscapes ash waste desert marshlands urban and jungle kind of just some different ideas there this building here they actually gave you a template for for the voguing campaign of how to make uh this looks like a forge world this is forge world terrain for sure this is some plastic stuff that they put out back in the day that you could get with the starters and then these are a combination of forge world uh, lines and pillboxes right here and then probably some pringles cans or something like that this was some old uh Tyranid terrain as well it looks like and then just some stuff cut out of uh, polystyrene um, stacked on top of each other and glued together and then painted so let's talk about and here's some of the rules like combat patrols first introduced in this here I wanted to talk about some more terrain stuff here and some uh, terrain scenarios actually uh, here's another way to kind of make 
some buildings and things. They put this template in here and they told you to uh, photocopy it at 200%. And that's what they used uh, to base a lot of this stuff on. And you could cut this section out, the shaded section, you would just make two of them and that would give you the floor. Just, uh, you know, cut it out and put it on uh, uh, phone core or whatever. These were some of the special missions, rescue, patrol, night fight. Uh, night fight, a lot of these things were scenario special rules to trigger off. You didn't just like roll for it to get it. And that was really interesting. Rescue was a tough one. I remember playing that. Patrol was also a tough mission. And then they had battle missions which utilized the use of terrain because they were kind of bigger and they required different force organization charts because they you could have more things like if you were the attacker you would have more like fast attack stuff you wouldn't have heavy attack heavy uh heavy support stuff if you were a defender you would try to have more heavy support because you were trying to hold out and there's a whole sorts of uh, special rules section where like you could take bunkers and you didn't embark on them or do anything like you do today but bunkers were really interesting because they gave a cover save of three up which was big back then um and basically there was a uh, ways to breach it if you hit it with a strength eight weapon and remember strength eight was like the d of back in the day like it was like oh my god you got a strength eight weapon ah, i can't beat you or whatever you know um if they were armor 14 and they gave a saving throw um once it was breached of still four uh four up which was pretty cool a cover saving throw then they had uh, the different special rules. Sustained attack was uh, usually from Meat Grinder, where basically if you lost all of the models in a troop choice, they would come back on at the edge of the board and then work their way back up. So, uh, you know, a clever player would make sure that they didn't kill all of the models in one of the squads so that, you know, the guy playing uh, wouldn't get to recycle that squad. But a lot of times they'd fail their check and eventually run away and you, you would get them. And then had obstacles that you could use and buy to put around your stuff like razor wire. They counted as difficult ground and tank traps, which were uh, impassable to uh, vehicles and skimmers. And then here's oh, and preliminary bombardment was actually a thing too. They they basically uh, simulated artillery or like uh, aircraft coming in low and dropping bombs over the battlefield. So you rolled for each squad. If you rolled a six, uh, you would have to take that many. Um, you rolled another d6, and however many you you rolled on that one, you would have to take that many saves, just straight up saves for your squad. So you might lose a couple guys here and there that didn't duck for cover or whatever. But it was you know it was just kind of a neat mechanic. But sometimes you would um you would take some casualties on somebody random like a heavy weapon dude or something like that that would help out. Then there was three different scenarios. There was bunker assault, hold at all costs, and meat grinder itself, which we were just talking about there, um, where you got to recycle your troops through. That was always whenever you played a meat grinder mission, it was always like oh man this is gonna take forever. I'm gonna bring, keep bringing everything back on. And Tyranids actually had an, a nifty rule in one of the editions. I forget they had without number where they basically benefited from that that rule as well. Um, so the defender got a bunker. You know um, they could do basically have in a, every 500 points they could have a bunker. So 1500 they would have three. 2000 points they would have four. They had a big deployment zone. Lots more. Res, um, backup in the form of like heavy support choices and things and they would just try to take it to the attacker and attacker of course was supposed to be faster and and more clever and um you know just able to get in and uh, do some damage there and then here was a template for how to build a bunker out of plastic card i think they gave you it to, yeah there's a template and this was a really cool one you probably see some of these in game stores like in the corner or ruined or a few still might have theirs there's some guides on how to paint it um, on up and the dark flush was so basically underneath it would still look a little dingy and dirty and this one was straight up you f you photograph this at uh, the full resolution and but you needed two of them to make the template and then it gave you ideas for more fortifications tank traps uh, this was actually put out by forger all back in the day they don't really make them anymore here was some other scratch built stuff here's some uh, stuff by forger World as well that were constructed and some stuff from the, the old Cadian book. Making craters was actually easy back in the day too. You just basically made a zircle and then cut it up, made some support and you could pour some, um, uh, you just basically poured, uh, what was it? Some gap filler over top of it, or you didn't even need to do all that and just pour you a, a pound of gap filler over it and make, you know, make the thing, make your little shape with gap filler. Um, you know and let it dry but you had to make sure you had a, a very strong bottom so to speak so it didn't bow up on you but there you can see the, it's very effective like that looks really cool you know the effect of preliminary bombardment then it gets into some more mission types which we're not really going to cover because i want to focus more on terrain here were some minefield markers and ideas and things and then there was a nifty section back here of some custom tables that they had made um some of these you might have seen at a game day 
This was some kill team terrain, but I liked it because, you know, it's the full 4x6 table and it's very dynamic. Like, you've got this kind of open ground kind of fortress, some polar kind of deals for Fenris, um, some urban, like, inside machinery, kind of like a hive, uh, hive world or like a, you know, a hive spire kind of thing. And then this, like, kind of a jungle kind of fortress thing that was, uh, I think they used a lot of cut up MDF to make these high rise areas here and there were special rules for going up and down the, um, the, the high rise kind of it's it's basically like a 40k ewok village <laughs> i kind of dug it i uh, never got to make one back in the day but it was uh, one of my favorites there so that was just some ideas for some things you can do with terrain and some ways to get some really interesting terrain um features and things and some of these missions you can still port back uh to use in the current edition you might just have to uh, abbreviate the the rules a little bit those are the special missions there but uh, the here they are right here the terrain the terrain specific missions right there out of the fourth edition rule book so you can generally find these books like super cheap on eBay like five six seven bucks I've seen them as low as like a dollar you know plus shipping I mean it's a great resource to get a lot of good if you're into narrative battles and you perhaps you know not satisfied with the stuff that's out there currently from games workshop or the you know price tag on it this is a good resource to pick up some really cheap rules that are adaptable um, still over the seventh edition today you know the system really didn't change that much um, it just kind of got added to and um, I guess tweaked a little bit here and there for uh, compatibility and uh, streamlineness so to speak so that's pretty much it for this hobby flashback 40k flashback thanks for watching Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.